Hello everyone, this is a GCSE Maths Revision video. There will be a series of videos that will cover 10 topics or 10 questions at a time. So I will release them one after the other. So please do not forget to subscribe for the other videos or save these videos in your playlist. So first question, adding fraction, which is a very common question that appears on most of the GCSE exams. First of all, we need to find the common denominator. So we have a denominator 7 and 5, so common denominator will be 35. So, common denominator 35, and we need to find the equivalent fraction. We have to multiply this 7 by 5, so multiply the numerator by 5, 5 times 2 is 10. To get to 35, we have to multiply the denominator by 7, so we have to multiply the numerator by 7. So, 7 over 35. So, denominator stays the same, and the numerator 10 out of 7 is 17. The answer is 17 over 35, and it's worth two marks. You will get one mark for writing the common denominator, and then a correct numerator, and two marks for the right answer. Question B. We've got a mixed number divided by a fraction, so when you divide or multiply mixed numbers, we have to change them into a top heavy fraction. So 3 times 1 is 3, add the 2 which is 5, so 5 over 3. Change the sign to times and flip over the second fraction. Multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. Before you do that, just double check if you can simplify it, that would make your life a little easier. Here we can't, so leave it as 20, 5 times 4 is 20, 3 times 3 is 9. Don't forget to change it into mixed number. Over here it does not say it, so you might not lose mark for not writing it. Mixed number, you could probably get two marks, full marks for writing as a top heavy fraction. Okay, but regardless, I'll change it anyway, just so that you know how to do that. So 9 goes into 20 twice, 9 times 2 is 18, 2 remainder over 9. 2 and 2 ninths, or you can leave the answer as 20 over 9. According to mark scheme, the answer is 20 over 9. Altogether, we have four marks. Next, we have a coordinate question. So we have, write down the coordinates of the point A. So first of all, we have to go across first, 1, 2, and then up, 1. So remember to write the x-coordinate first, so 2 across, and then 1 up. Write down the coordinates of the point B. So we have to go 1, 2 to the left, which is now minus 2. So let's write down minus 2. And we have to go 1, 2, 3. Up, oh, positive 3. Minus 2, 3. And these are worth 1 mark. Now you will probably lose mark if you write them the wrong way around. So always remember to write them the right way around. So x coordinate first and then the y coordinate. Next, we have on the grid, mark with the cross, the point minus 3, minus 1. So minus 3, minus 1. So we have to go minus 3, 3 across to the left, 1, 2, 3, and then minus 1, which is 1 down. So this is the point. And then we have to mark it with a cross and label as point C. Final question, on the grid, draw the line x equals 3. So x equals 3. So where well, x is equal to 3 here, so on the x-axis, this is 3. So we have to draw a straight line. I don't have a ruler here, but make sure you use a pencil or ruler to draw this line, x equals 3. So this line is x equals 3. This is worth 4 marks altogether. So these are worth 1 mark each, uh, either right or wrong. If you get them wrong, for example, like I said before, if you write the corners the wrong way around, you will lose the mark. So you need to make sure you write them the right way around because these are worth only one mark. The centimetre grid shows the plan and the front elevation of a cylinder. Work out the volume of the cylinder. Give your answer in terms of pi. Now, because it's a non-calculated question, it's asking you to write the answer in terms of pi. So first of all, let's work out the area of the circle. And we know to find the area of the circle, we need the radius because the area of the circle formula is pi r squared. So we have the radius point, midpoint. We have to count how many squares we have here. So one, two, three. So the radius is three. 
So write, I'll write down radius is equal to 3. So the area of the circle is pi times 3 squared, which is pi times 9, which is 9 pi. Now because it's a cylinder, we need to work out the height as well. So the height is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pi r squared times by the height. So pi r squared, we have 9 pi times by the height is 5. So that gives us 45 pi. And it asks us to leave the answer in terms of pi. So we left it as 45 pi pi. So the answer is 45 pi. I always write down as a column addition so that you get things 100% right. Easy marks, don't want to miss them out. There's only one marks, so the right or wrong. 8 at 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 at 7 is 12, add the 1 is 13. And then carry the 1. 2 at 1 is 3, add the 1 is 4. Put the decimal down, make sure the decimal is aligned. So that gives us 43.0 or just 43 and that's the answer for this question next we have a quarter of 60 so divided by 4 times by 1 so 60 divided by 4 which is 15 and 15 times by 1 which is 15 so the answer is 15 write down the value of 3 in 18.35 so we have the three, so we've got hundreds, tenths, so three is three tenths, so it'd be three over ten or zero point three. So three tenths will do, and this is worth one mark. Altogether we have for this question three marks. So question number five only blue cubes, red cubes, and yellow cubes in a box. The table show the probability taking a random a blue cube from the box. The number of red cubes in the box is the same as the number of yellow cubes in the box. Complete the table. Okay, so we have the probability of blue cubes. And the number of red cubes in the box is the same as number of yellow cubes. So these two are the same. So we know probability adds up to 1. So let's work out the remaining probability. 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Now because the red and yellow are both equal, so we're going to half 0 0.8. That gives us 0 0.4. So red is 0 0.4, yellow is 0 0.4. Always double check that these probability add up to a whole or a 1. There are 12 blue cubes in the box. Work out the total number of cubes in the box. Okay, so there are 12 blue cubes in the box. Okay, so we know 0 0.2 the same as 12 blue cubes. Total number of cubes. So, 0 0.4 will be 24. So, 0 0.2 is 12. 0 0.4 is just double that. 0 0.8 will be 48, double day again. Now, we know 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 adds up to a whole. Okay, so we're going to add these two. 48 add 12. That's going to give us 60 altogether. So, there are 60 cubes in the box. And this is worth two marks. So, find the value of y. So we know angles around the point add up to 360 degrees. And also he is asking for a reason as well. So we need this reason later on. So we need to work out 360, take away the 70. And that will give us the size of this angle. So 16 take away 7 is 9. And then board 1, that would be 290. Just double check, that adds up to 360, so the angle, missing angle is 290 degrees. The reason is, angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. So angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. And that's your full reason, 8,000. Okay, and that's one answer. That's an A01 question worth one mark. Write 4.666, correct to the nearest whole number. So 4.666, we can see is more than halfway, more than 4.5. So we can round it to 5. That's again one mark, easy mark. 
An estimation question, work out an estimate for 790 times 289 over 49. Uh, we know we, uh, before we estimate, we need to round the numbers to one significant figure. So let's go ahead and round these numbers. So let's write out the question first, nice and big, so you can see it. So 790 rounded to one significant figure, which add one, so that becomes 800 times by Add one. So anything above five, I'm rounding it to one above. <coughs> so that'd be three. I round it to three hundred, and that becomes fifty. Now before we do the calculation, try to simplify as much as you can. So divide top and bottom by ten. Divide by five. Divide by five. There's one and six here. So six times eight hundred which gives us 6 times 8 is 48 and then so 4800 is the answer this is worth three marks where do we get the mark for rounding to at least two figures to one significant figure that's one mark and next mark will come from for a correct calculation using their rounded values and then the final answer will come from the final answer, which is if it's between 4,550 and 4,800. So we got 4,800. Our final question for this video is a compound measure or beat distance time question. Don't forget to subscribe for the other videos or save these videos in your playlist so you can access the revision videos. Uh, as I said before, I'll be releasing 10 topics or tense questions at a time to keep the video short and easy to revise so a plane travels at a speed of 230 miles per hour work out an estimate for the number of seconds the plane takes to travel one mile so you know speed is equal to distance distance divided by time or time is equal to distance divided by speed so we need to work out for one mile that'd be one over 213 can be rounded to 200 only to one significant figure and because we're finding in in estimate the number of seconds so we need to work out one hour is 60 minutes times by 60 seconds what we have to do is simplify this calculation so divided by 10 top and bottom divide by 10 2 goes into 6 3 times, so 3 times 6 is 18, that will be 18, so that will take 18 seconds. Is your answer to part A an underestimate or an overestimate? Give a reason for your answer. So the answer is an overestimate because speed has been rounded down, because we rounded down the 213 to 200, uh, so answer is overestimate. because the speed has been rounded down. And that's the answer. So this question is worth four marks altogether. So next video, I will go through some more topics. So please don't forget to subscribe. And if you think this video is useful, please do give it a like to let me know that this is helping you. Good luck with your exam and see you in the next video.